معذره على this technical problem now i'm going just to talk about management of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis uh, this is my uh, agenda i'm just going to briefly talk about focal segmental introduction prognostic uh, factors response to therapy and overall approach to therapy non immunosuppressive medications and immunosuppressive medication and other new modalities for management of focal segmentals and I will finish by take home message and conclusion. Uh, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, as we all know, is a morphologic pattern of glomerular injury primarily uh, uh, directed at the glomerular uh, visceral epithelial cells, and it may be uh, idiopathic in most of the cases, and it may be secondary in some cases, as Dr. Sosan just was talking now. Primary focal segmental glomerulosclerosis can present acutely with an overt nephrotic syndrome uh, uh, characterized by hypoalbuminemia and edema. Uh, on the other hand, secondary focal segmental glomerulosclerosis uh, often pre uh, presented as asymptomatic proteinuria without a profound uh, hypoalbuminemia or edema. And to differentiate between primary and uh, secondary uh, uh, focal segmental disease uh, is particularly important because the treatment is totally different in both. Uh, primary focal segmental glomerulosclerosis is often responsible, responsive to uh, treatment with glucocorticoid and immunosuppressive medications. Uh, uh, while the secondary uh, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis usually responds to the non-immunologic medications. Uh, these are the different uh, causes of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, either viral disease, drugs, genetic uh, uh, mutations, and some adaptive and structural changes in the glomeruli including reflux, glomerulopathy, hypertension in some cases, diabetes, obesity, and sickle cell disease. Uh, and these are the different uh, pathologic pattern. I'm just going to skip these points. Dr. Sousan, I think she talked extensively about them. So just to remind you, the focal segmental, none otherwise specified, or very highlar variant, or uh, a cellular variant or collapsing variant and focal segmental tip lesion. And these are the prognostic uh, uh, variables that determine the, uh, the, I mean, the fate of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. The degree of proteinuria, the worse the proteinuria, the worse the prognosis, and the severity of the renal dysfunction also on, upon the presentation when the patient is presented with decline in the GFR, the prognosis, of course, is going to be worse. And according to the uh, histologic pattern also, the collapsing pattern is the worst one among the uh, different pathologic terms of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. <coughs> Uh, regarding the response to therapy, uh, just a few terms you should know. I think I, all of you, I think, are just aware ab about it. In terms of complete remission, what does it mean? It means that the patient got to respond with a reduction of the proteinuria less than 300 milligrams per day or partial uh, uh, response. The patient came down beyond or less than 3.5 grams uh, per 24 hours or a relapse means that return of proteinuria to more than nephrotic range 3.5 gram per, decil, per, per day and uh, someone who is already responsive and got remission either complete or partial uh, steroid dependence the patient is going to be dependent on the steroid once you decline the dose the patient may be may get relapse again or may have uh, some deterioration of the kidney and the proteinuria. And the patient was resistant to proteinuria. This is a patient who never uh, developed improvement in terms of partial or complete remission upon initiation of treatment. And the percentage of uh, event free patient among those patients who either remission or non-remission of course, is a patient who gets remitted earlier, the uh, frequency of relapse or non-responding non -responding is going to be just minimal in comparison to those who didn't respond from the start. 
And this data from the KD go just to just very uh, outlines or just highlighting or shedding the light on the management of patient with focal segmental and patient with histologic evidence of primary focal segmental glomerulosclerosis who have nephrotic syndrome are usually of offered a disease modifying agent with glucocorticoid or immunosuppressive medication. And they just uh, recommended that to provide such treatment in patient with focal segmental, primary focal segmental glomerulosclerosis with nephrotic range proteinuria, more than 3.5. While those patient with non-nephrotic range of proteinuria, less than 3.5 gram, this patient may be considered as those who are secondary and usually respond to other modalities rather than immunosuppressive indication or glucocorticoid. Again, patient, uh, uh, I mean, they just offered, uh, recommended again that patient, uh, glucocorticoid and other immunosuppressive medication uh, are not initiated in patients who do not have nephrotic syndrome, as I mentioned earlier. And again, they mentioned we do not uh, usually initiate such treatment in patients with histologic evidence of extensive glomerulosclerosis or interstitial fibrosis. It's very important the patient who have, for example, tubular atrophy for more than 30% or extensive glomerulosclerosis or who have, who have interstitial fibrosis, the role of glucocorticoid or other immunosuppressive medication is going to be very minimal in those patients. And now I'm just going just to talk about the non-immunosuppressive therapy for patients uh, with uh, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. This medication that we just uh, uh, define as antiproteinuric drugs, for example, ACE inhibitors. This one of the most, ACE or ARBs, for, uh, in actual fact. And these are the two main non-immunologic suppressive, uh, immunosuppressive therapy uh, should be instituted either ACE or ARBs and or lipid uh, lowering medication. Let's start with ACE inhibitors or ARBs. Uh, ACE or ARBs uh, should be given to all patients with primary focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, such as a specific immunosuppressive treatment is undertaken or primary therapy for patients with non-nephrotic range proteinuria who are usually uh, secondary, uh, secondary focal segmental or patients who are not receiving immunosuppression for a reason or the other, like those who are just uh, suffering from extensive fibrosis or uh, uh, interstitial fibrosis or glomerulosclerosis. ACE inhibitors reduce the proteinuria in patients with primary or secondary focal segmental, but rarely induce remission without immunosuppressive treatment. In addition, these drugs slow the rate of the progression to kidney disease, like other chronic kidney disease, ACE or ARBs, just do so in the same, uh, to the same degree in patients with focal segmental by uh, uh, reducing or slowing the progression of chronic kidney disease or focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. And this study on enalabril showed that enalabril improved renal function. It's an uh, old uh, study, but yeah, it shows the, the role of ACE. And uh, I think another study is talking about ARBs also, showing the benefit of ACE inhibitors in progression or slowing the progression of the proteinuria and slow the decline in the GFR in patient with uh, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Showing this data showing that the proteinuria is getting improved here. There is no uh, pointer. It's okay. It's showing here the proteinuria is getting improved in patient receiving the uh, arm of uh, enalabril. And similarly, on the line of the second line, it shows also that the creatinine is getting improved. And they concluded that. Thank you so much. They concluded that enalabril therapy may improve the progression in glomerulosclerosis or maintain, maintaining the GFR or even improve the GFR. Uh, the role of uh, uh, lipid lowering agent has been studied and just uh, in many studies and many uh, researches. And uh, uh, just to know hyperlipidemia was. Uh, often dramatic uh, elevation in the serum cholesterol. This is a clinical, typical scenario that we have 
in patient with nephrotic syndrome due to a reason that you all know hypoalbuminemia with compensatory increase of the lipid just to, uh, to carry the function of the albumin is well known in patient with nephrotic syndrome and similarly in patient with chronic kidney disease and both of them are associated with, as you know, cardiovascular morbidity and the mortality. Therefore, the role of the lipid lowering agent may have an impact in patient with uh, uh, focal segmental or nephrotic syndrome in general. And this data, a systematic review Cochrane, from Cochrane Library, which uh, just studied the uh, lipid lowering agent for nephrotic uh, syndrome uh, a review and it showed that there is no enough evidence or I mean considerable high quality evidence to just say that the lipid may have an impact in management or uh, slowing the progression of focal segmental, like other all uh, uh, nephrotic syndromes. Now let's talk about the very important topic in my talk, which is immunosuppressive medications and its role in management of patient with chronic uh, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Uh, and most of the patients initiating glucocorticoid are talking now about steroid, okay, which is the mainstay or cornerstone of management of different glomerulonephritis or nephrotic syndromes in general. And most of patients initiating glucocorticoid therapy for primary focal segmental glomerulonephritis, we use prednisolone 1 milligram per kg, the maximum dose of 60 to 80 milligram per day with subsequent tapering of the dose. If the patient is responding within one month or so, he's just getting to extend the, the, uh, the dose for another two weeks or something, then you taper the medication of a period of, over a period of one or two, uh, two or three months. Okay? Uh, depending upon the response to the, uh, uh, and the toxicity to this therapy, the duration of the breathing alone may vary according to the response from eight to 12 weeks as long as uh, maybe one year or something. If the patient uh, is, is having a complete remission, okay, uh, within uh, eight to 12 weeks, as I mentioned, we continue the initial response of uh, the dose of uh, bradyzolone for another one or two weeks, then we taper over three months. If there is partial response, okay, <clears throat> with more than 50% of the initial proteinuria or less than 3.5 gram, okay, we, uh, uh, we, um, uh, the, the, the uh, remission or the partial remission achieved by 12 weeks, we tiver over uh, uh, nine months, okay, we tiver over long period actually just to maintain this even partial remission. For patient, uh, what we should do for, I mean, uh, duration uh, and monitoring of patient with glucocorticoid, uh, complete or partial emission after it's been attained, proteinuria increase while the breathing zone is stable, then we stop this dose that we reach it upon and we initiate again from the far beginning. For example, if you start by 80 milligram and the patient upon uh, tapering started to, I mean, to, to get relapse or whatever again, then we resume the initial dose and for the period that it's assumed, for example, 12 weeks or, mo or more, then we taper again. And these are the factors associated with lower response to glucocorticoid. As I mentioned earlier, like other immunosuppressant, significant tubular interstitial disease, massive proteinuria, more than 10 uh, gram per day. Sometimes they call it malignant proteinuria, or more than 14 gram per day. They call it like that, malignant proteinuria. Or not malignant as malignant, and just by kind of it's gonna be extensive or massive proteinuria. Steroid resistant in the presence on, uh, is present in some of the familial forms of the focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, and uh, it's been associated with mutation of some gene. And these are uh, just uh, studies just talking about the factors uh, associated with poor response to patient with focal segmental, massive proteinuria, and uh, they concluded that, as I mentioned earlier, the degree of proteinuria uh, at presentation consistently has been prognostic, of so prognostic significance. It's, it's more than uh, 10 milligram or 14 gram per 24 hour, I'm sorry. It's associated with 
uh, uh, poor response and even progress to end stage renal disease. And similarly, also they are talking about the patient who are responding or not responding initially. The prognosis also depends upon the initial response. And now I'm going to talk about the other immunosuppressive medication. And let's start with calcineurin inhibitor as an alternative initial therapy. It may be, but usually you start with steroid. However, in patient with uh, at, at increased risk for glucocorticoid toxicity, for example, those with obesity, for example, diabetic patient, and with severe osteoporosis and elderly, this patient may get benefit from other uh, immunosuppressive medication like uh, cyclosporin or tacrolimus with or without low dose of steroid. And uh, uh, calcineurin inhibitor is avoided or contraindicated in patient with vascular uh, or interstitial disease or with GFR less than 30 milliliter per minute upon presentation because of its well-known nephrotoxicity. And this data is just talking about the treatment of focal, segmental, uh, focal and segmental glomerulosclerosis in adult with tacrolimus monotherapy. Thus, they are just, this study showed that the uh, benefit of, uh, I mean, improving at follow-up of, of the proteinuria in terms of uh, remission. Okay, this mentions that, that uh, clearly that <clears throat> Uh, TAC appears to be an effective treatment in focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, and the effect of TAC on uh, renal function uh, is ne in, in this study actually was just uh, carried out in very few number of patients, and they concluded that it should be I mean, carried out on a large scale of patients to see if the real response of focal segmental is uh, to be considered in patient taking tacrolimus. And similarly, cyclosporin. Uh, uh, if cyclosporin is used uh, according to uh, Kidigo, they mentioned that to start with two to four milligram uh, per day, uh, given in two divided doses, uh, uh, with uh, tacro uh, cyclosporin trough level uh, to be between 100 and 170 uh, nanogram per ml. And if tacrolimus is to be used, they start with 0 0.5, 0 0.1 milligram per kg per day, given in two divided doses also with a trough level of tacrolimus from 5 to 10 nanogram per ml. As with cyclosporin, the dose may be needed to be adjusted depending upon the clinical response and the trough level. Um, yeah, this medication actually, this is a slide actually is very important because we're talking about the duration of medication. Uh, CNIs to, to be continued at least six months following uh, attainment of complete uh, remission and one year following attainment of partial response or partial remission. Uh, and due to the concern of acute nephrotoxicity and the hyperkalemia, it's better to measure the serum creatinine and potassium in patient receiving these two medications. And thereafter, uh, the serum creatinine, electrolyte, fasting blood sugar, and urine BCR ratio at least every month or two weeks in patient receiving such medication after attainment of remission. Uh, how about those patients who are relapsed after a long time of complete or partial remission? In patients who are previously had complete or partial remission uh, with glucocorticoid who uh, didn't have significant side effect, uh, uh, has not developed a condition that increased the risk of glucocorticoid nephrotoxicity, uh, and has been in a remission for a long period, more than two uh, months, Okay, after discontinuation of the steroid, we, I mean, assume to restart or to repeat the medication again. If the patient had significant glucocorticoid and whatever, okay, uh, uh, we, it's better to start with another medication if the patient didn't get the initial response. For example, we see in I with or without low dose of steroid, provided, as I mentioned earlier, the GFR is more than 30 milliliter per minute. Or if there is any contraindication or some nephrotoxicity with CNI, we, uh, we uh, advise to start with MMF as an alternative to the CNI 
with uh, combined with low dose glucocorticoid. Treatment of patient with steroid uh, dependent or steroid resistant, uh, I think is gonna, we're going to start with uh, CNI or MMF, and this is like the same scenarios that I mentioned. Besides, I mean, bearing in mind uh, there is no evidence of decline of the GFR, of evidence of interstitial fibrosis or extensive glomerulosclerosis, or to use the newer medication like rituximab or cytotoxic T lymphocyte. E4 and, uh, inhibitors, and this data talking about the, uh, raw, the, the management of patient, it was one of the randomized trial of cyclosporin in patient with uh, steroid resistant and steroid uh, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. It's mentioned here, it is very clear here that the patient was uh, uh, free of, uh, free of uh, relapses or the, the, the uh, Mrs. stops of, uh, I mean, decline of the GFR or proteinuria is much better in patients who are receiving uh, cyclosporin in comparison to the placebo. And the conclusion here was that cyclosporin is an effective therapeutic agent in the treatment of steroid-resistant cases of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. And similarly, tacrolimus also, but this, uh, this mentioned very clearly, they need a large randomized study to just to test the effect of the tacrolimus in patient with, however, is, it's, it's one of the best alternative in patient with uh, focal segmental either dependent or resistant nephrotic syndrome. And the role of mycophenolate mofetil also in the treatment of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis has been studied, and the conclusion was MMF appears safe to use in patients with uh, resistant or uh, dependent nephrotic syndrome, and they are not, as uh, they are contraindicated for other modalities like CNIs, uh, tacrolimus, or uh, focal segmental. And this study was also carried on a small uh, scale of patient, and they recommended also to be uh, carried on a uh, mean large or wide scale of patient. And the other therapeutic is not uh, new anymore. It, is, it was just well known uh, medication like, for example, uh, uh, rituximab for management in patient with steroid dependent rather than steroid resistant. I'm just and just uh, for patients who are resistant, their chance to get benefit from rituximab is just considered very minimal. So if you like to go for rituximab for patient who has focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, you just start earlier in patient who are either dependent or if you have the money, you can start early without, I mean, just knowing that it's steroid dependent or even resistant. And this data, uh, for uh, uh, rituximab, they are just talking about uh, management of eight patients with steroid resistant. Only three of them got responded to rituximab, and they mentioned that for patients who are steroid resistant, not to be tested for uh, uh, rituximab. I think the same, almost the same scenario. These two studies, one of them are, uh, the same study actually are just four patients. Two of them were steroid dependent and two were steroid resistant. The two steroid dependent who were responding about the others steroid resistant did not. And other modality of uh, uh, medicine, of therapy is the plasma pharesis or apheresis and related modalities uh, based upon a very limited experience according to Kidigo. Uh, they consider plasma pharesis in patient with primary focal segmental glomerulosclerosis in the following conditions, like patient with severe uh, disease manifestation despite an adequate trial of initial immunosuppressive medication in which very high level of circulating uh, uh, permeability factors are there. And the patient with continued massive, as I mentioned earlier, malignant proteinuria with proteinuria more than 10 gram or 14 gram per day, or suffering severe hypoalbuminemia despite exposure to an adequate course of prednisolone or cyclosporin or MMF. And late, lastly, the recurrent FAS is just in addition to a transplant. There's just as one of the hyperacute uh, rejection actually in transplant, and this one of the indication 
of plasma phoresis in those patients. And uh, this study actually also uh, mentioned clearly that the plasma phoresis may uh, uh, de diminish proteinuria and stabilize uh, uh, renal function in a small minority of patients. ولكن لا تعمم يعني كواحدة من ضمن المودالتي اوف تريتمنت الا في الظروف اللي احنا قلنا عليها وطبعا بيزد على حتى الكي ديجو نفسهم يقولوا ان الزير اكسبيرينس از فيري ليميتد ان ذات ايشو اند ذيس ستادي اولسو جاست اولزو ات از دان ان سمول نمبر اوف بيشنت بات زي جاست اتس ديمينيش بات اتس جونا بي نوت ذا مين لاين اوف تريتمنت ان بيشنت ويز سترو ديبندنت او ريزيستنت نفروتيك سندروم اند ذا نيور ايجنت لايك كو ستيمولاتري انهيبيشن او ابات سيفت او سي تي ال اي 4 انهيبيتورز Uh, they are just tested here in this study, and they mentioned that in very few cases it may induce a remission in patients with focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Uh, and the, the last, I think, is the last modality of medication, which is LDL apheresis, and it's a very small randomized clinical studies using this variable schedule for loading stilabo protein apheresis in patients with steroid resistant focal segmental glomerulosclerosis have demonstrated some benefit in patient with uh, in terms of reduction of proteinuria and improving the serum albumin. And this study, uh, uh, as I mentioned, just uh, for using the LDL apheresis, uh, should be used earlier. I mean, Bardo, it is the same. If you use it later in patients with resistance and those suffering from long-term complications, uh, I think the, the benefit is going to be very minimal in those patients. So you use it like other modalities of medication as early as possible. Once it's resistance, means it's resistant. Okay, I think I just want uh, I just I came to my conclusion, Mr. Chairman, and I'm um, sorry if I just got one minute extra, Dr. Hussain. Uh, uh, the use of ACE uh, inhibitors or ARBs uh, along with the uh, good blood pressure control should be one of the uh, main modality for management of patients with focal segmental glomerulosclerosis and a nephrotic patient with primary focal segmental uh, 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 there is uh, recent uh, evidence that using of immunosuppressive medication in treating such a patient is very important. Uh, uh, keeping in mind also the glucocorticoid should be kept as a cornerstone and for initiation of treatment of those patients. Um, a patient showing a response to treatment, the dose or should be uh, can be slowly tapered over additional three months for patients unresponsive to initial course of therapy, a more rapid taper over, for example, four weeks should be utilized to minimize the further steroid exposure. And in relapsing patient or steroid dependent, two to three months extra uh, for cytotoxic agents like cyclosporin or other uh, chacrylimus or uh, MMF or there is contraindication to both. Uh, they can get benefit of this medication. And in patients who are steroid resistant CNI appears to have a better overall uh, uh, response rate uh, than the other cytotoxicity uh, agent. And since the relapse is common after CNI, it is to, should be discontinued in patients with suffering glomerular sclerosis or other toxicities like hyperkalemia and decline in the GFR. Thank you for your attention and I'm ready for any questions.